that just has three quick and easy steps. It starts from connective tissue. Okay. Endochondral ossification, look at that word. Endo within chondral cartilage. Okay. Endochondral ossification starts with cartilage. Okay, and so here is our nice cartilage. Look, it's shaped like a long bone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll call this the future proximal epiphysis, and this is the future distal epiphysis, and this is the future diaphysis. Right now, it's all hyaline cartilage. Okay, and hyaline cartilage is, remember, if we remember cartilage, it's surrounded by a perichondrium. So first, the, so first the mesenchymal cells of connective tissue form cartilage. That's the first thing that happens. Okay. And then after the cartilage is formed, there's some pretty magical things that happen. Um, let's start with step one. So chondrocytes in the center of the cartilage, so these guys here, start becoming really big. Okay, they form, as they get bigger, they're a little harder to manage, right? Cells need more nutrients as they're bigger. Their source surface to area volume changes. Okay, so they form, they form struts and they calcify. And because they calcify, this causes them to die. And so now that they're dying, they, they're leaving holes in the cartilage. So now we have holes in the very center of our cartilage. First they enlarge, then they calcify, then they die. And I think you need to kind of map this out on your own. You need to draw this, and you need to diagram it, or what are those called, concept maps? Mm -hmm. Okay, step two is that this, this blood vessel that was supplying the cartilage starts growing around the edge of the cartilage. And this is where the magic happens. Something about these blood vessels change this perichondium into osteoblast. Okay, that's magic. Woo. It just happens. Okay, some, somehow these perichondrium cells, which were destined to become cartilage, now all of a sudden change their tissue type over to osteoblasts. Okay, and so this produces a superficial layer of bone right here on the outside. And we call that oppositional. You know, when you add in width, mm -hmm. it's called oppositional growth, okay? lamellae um, encircle the, these arteries here run parallel to the shaft of the bone, and this concentric lamellae basically envelop it. Okay, but we'll talk about that a little more in a second. So step three is that <clears throat> blood vessels that were out here and that made this perichondrium change into periosteum, uh, change into osteoblasts, osteoblasts, now invade that holy cartilage center that was, uh, remember it was, it had holes in it because the cartilage cells had died. And so now they invade the cartilage in the center and they bring, with them they bring fibroblasts that become osteoblasts. Okay, so now we have 
spongy bone developing at what we call a primary ossification center. So first the blood vessels invade the cartilage and then that cartilage becomes osteoblasts, another magic trick, okay? And so once we have osteoblasts here, the osteoblasts can lay down bone, okay? So now we have spongy bone developing right here. Where does this happen? And we call this the primary ossification center. Notice with um, intramembranous ossification, we don't <coughs> have primary and secondary ossification sites, okay? We don't even use those, we just say ossification, okay? So this is very specific to the cartilage model, okay, that we have a primary ossification in the very center of the shaft. Step three is now um, development of the primary ossification center. So um, the perichondrium lays down a bone collar out here. The new, we call this the nutrient artery, the one that runs the shaft of the bone. The nutrient artery penetrates um, the perichondrium. Um, the osteoblasts start depositing bone matrix. And then we also have osteoclasts that um, erode the spongy bone in the center and make it a medullary cavity. So now we're just going to have bone marrow in here in this long bone. <coughs> Step four, <coughs> excuse me, um, is a marrow cavity. And then, um, cartilage that's at this right here, do you see? We, you know, cause we, this was all cartilage, but we can see that we, we have bone starting to grow right here at this metaphysis. We call the place where the diaphysis and the epiphysis meet, we call it the metaphysis. So step four is creating the marrow cavity and having the bone actually um, start growing here at this boundary. Finally, step five, which is secondary ossification centers. So now the capillaries and the osteoblasts migrate to the ends of the bones, here and here. And that creates a secondary ossification center here and one here. So we still have cartilage all here except for the very center and the center here. See, I changed this slide too because I didn't like having two slides of step five. I got to remember to post the new one. I'm sorry. I, I must have mixed up the names. Um, I don't like having two step fives, but step five continued. Um, Anyway, uh, the secondary ossification center uh, is invaded. So we have spongy bone form here, okay, but we don't have osteoclasts that make a medullary cavity. So it's the same stages that occur in the primary ossification center, but the result is that you have um, epistial cartilage here being transformed into spongy bone on the inside. So the epiphyses now fill with spongy bone. Remember, this diaphysis filled, had spongy bone in it too, but it all became a dolary cavity. Okay? But the epiphysis gets spongy bone, and we call the remaining cartilage on the end of the bone articular cartilage, and we call the cartilage here epistial cartilage. It's the same cartilage, it's just this is, you know, articulating with the next bone, and this cartilage is actually a really important cartilage because 
Um, this cartilage, um, let's take a big picture of this here. So this is the cartilage up here. What do we see? Chondrocytes and lacuna. Okay? Chondrocytes and lacuna. And they're undergoing division. So this cartilage is continuing to grow. And this bone, these spicules of bone, okay, so these are the osteoblasts laying down. Here's the osteoid that they're laying down. These so the bone is growing exactly the same rate that the cartilage is growing. It's like if you have, and I, your book gives an example of two runners, mm -hmm. okay, and, and the, as long as they're running at the same rate, they'll never catch each other. But then eventually, once you reach adulthood, the cartilage stops growing. And um, this line, this cartilage closes and becomes the pistil line. Okay, but I do want you to understand this is a really important zone because we have um, bone growing here, this way, and we have cartilage growing here, this way. Okay, this is a, just a blow up of what we just said. Okay, up here's the cartilage, here's where the cartilage is proliferating that way. Here's where the cartilage is kind of, um, this is where the, the bone is calcifying. This is where the bone is being laid down. 